Okay, this video is going to be about finding the directional derivative of a function. Um, this is going to be the first of two examples. Um, and basically the theorem says, it says if you have a differentiable function of your variables x and y, it says that function has a what we call a directional derivative um, in the direction of any unit vector, and this is going to be important, um, our unit vector uh, being written with components a, b, and we just write the uh, the notation for the directional derivative. So we have the directional derivative of the function f of x, y in the direction of u. It says what we do is we take the partial derivative of x, um, evaluate it at our point, um, multiply that by um, the component a, do the same thing, take the partial with respect to y, evaluate it, multiply it by the component b. Um, and, you know, normally when you're finding partial derivatives, um, when you're taking the partial derivative of x and the partial derivative of y, um, there you're finding basically the directional derivative either in the uh, x direction or in the y direction. So this is just going to be a little more generic in that it, it allows you to find um, the derivative in any direction. Okay, so we want to find the directional derivative um, of the function x squared y cubed minus y to the fourth at the point 2, 1 in the direction given by this angle theta equals pi over 4. Okay, so the first thing, um, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter the order you do it. One thing you have to do is you have to find a unit vector. So we have to find a unit, direct, uh, a unit vector in the direction that corresponds to the angle theta equals pi over 4. And remember to do this, we can just take cosine of pi over 4 and also sine of pi over 4. That'll give us a unit vector, and again a unit vector is a vector of length 1 in the direction um, that corresponds to the angle um, pi over 4. So basically it's just old you know, trig stuff. Um, we know that cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Likewise, sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So, all right, well now I've got my, my unit vector. Um, now I just have to start taking partial derivatives and evaluate it at my point 2, 1. Okay, so, so we've got our unit vector, so I'm going to put that up here off to the side. So square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And according to the formula, it says the directional derivative of the function xy. Again, it says we take the partial derivative with respect to x. So now I'm looking back up here at my, obviously, my function. So I'm going to take the partial derivative with respect to x. So again, that means x is my variable, y is a constant, so the y to the third will just get carried along. Notice the derivative of x squared will be 2x, um, y cubed. Um, when we take the derivative of y to the fourth, since we're treating that like a constant, that will simply become 0. Then it says we have to multiply that by the component a. Okay, well, we know our a value, but I'm just going to write it still a little more generically, I guess. Um, then we have to take the partial derivative with respect to y. The derivative of y in the first term will be 3y squared. The x squared we're treating like a constant, so we leave that alone. So it looks like we get 3x squared, y squared. The derivative of uh, negative y to the fourth will be negative 4y to the third. Again, we multiply that by the component b. We know our a and our b. Um, it says to find the directional derivative. Now we just have to evaluate this function um, at the point. Okay, so we're using the point 2 comma 1. So that means, obviously, um, x is going to have value 2, y is going to have value 1. Again, the directional derivative, um, the first component is the a value. The second component is the b value from our unit vector. So now we just have to plug all of these things in. So we'll get 2, again, x is 2, y, which is 1 to the third power. We have to multiply that by the component a, which is square root of 2 over 2. Plus, now we just have to do the same thing over here. So we'll get 3 times x, 
which is 2 squared. Um, okay, plug in y, we simply get 1 squared minus 4 times 1 cubed. And again, we have to multiply all of that by square root of 2 over 2. So a little tedious, but not the end of the world. Um, so the 2 and the 2 will cancel. 1 is just, 1 cubed is 1. So it looks like from the first part we have 2 square root of 2 plus from the second part um, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 4 it looks like we get 8 times square root of 2 over 2 okay 8 over 2 well 8 over 2 is just going to give us 4 square root of 2 and uh, if we just simplify that down we'll simply get 6 um, square root of 2 as the value of the directional derivative um, and again, just like in two dimensions, you know, the derivative evaluated at a point um, is somehow tel telling you the slope of a tangent line. This is kind of just the three-dimensional analog, um, so we're evaluating the derivative. Um, now though, you know, in, since we're in three dimensions, um, the derivative can sort of be going any direction. And that's the idea, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to generalize so that you can find the... the um, the value of the derivative in any direction. So, all right, um, I hope this video makes some sense. If you have any questions, feel free to post comments um, and questions. I'm going to do another slightly different example in a different video, so feel free to take a look at that one as well. All right, um, I hope this helps.